my name is Rodney Hill, and today we're going to connect a Selector 6 to an ICB wireless tool. So I've already set up a little network here that we've connected both of these devices to, and if you have more questions on how to set up that network or how to set up the specific settings on the socket selector, please see our other product essential videos that, that cover those segments. For today, we're going to focus on what we need to do in the ICB to configure the socket selector to select programs. So I have a four position socket selector here, and I have sockets in each of my positions. I'm gonna go into the software here on our tool. We're on the home screen here. I need to do a few things to set this up. Uh, some of these things aren't completely necessary, but I think it's a good practice to have a way to, uh, to let the person that's using the tool know that the tool is ready to run. This particular tool has an EHMI, so we can actually see on the tool what program is selected. But if I didn't have that, I could still maybe give the operator some feedback on the light ring. So that's what we're going to do here. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my configurations menu, and I'm going to look at my tool configuration. So right now, I don't have anything configured special for my, my tool setup. I'm going to add a blue LED and have that come on when the tool is ready to run. So I'm going to go to my LED ring, click on Edit. My top option here is what's mapped to the blue LED signal. I'm going to go through this menu until I find something called ready to start. And ready to start lets me know that I have a program selected and the tool is not locked. So when I have that ready to start signal, I'll see blue lights around the light ring of the tool. And right now I don't have those. So I need to click the apply button. I do have a program selected right now and it is unlocked. So as soon as I apply this, I should see the blue lights come on around the light ring of the tool. So I'll go back now. That's our first step. Also in this menu, we have our socket selector a little bit further down in configurations. I just want to check and make sure that it represents my socket selector correctly. If I have an eight position socket selector, I can click the add button to add eight more positions. In this case, I only have four, so I'm just going to leave it a four position. And then I can say, if I don't want to use all four positions, I could turn one off or turn them on um, as, a, as I wish. So if I'm only using seven of eight positions, I can turn the eight posi position off so that it doesn't uh, look for a socket in that position. So I'm going to leave that set up the way that it is, because it just happens to match the socket selector that I have here. My control, we're going to use auto. That means it's going to be controlled by the tool. If you wanted to use external control, that would be like using open protocol to tell you which socket to select on the socket selector. That's something that's available as well. It's not something we're going to cover in this video. All right, so we'll go back to our home screen. And now we need to do something else. So I'm going to look at my tightening menu. And it looks like I have four or five programs here in my tightening menu. So what I want to do is I'm going to build my sources. So I need to have a selection template that says, when I pull socket one, this is what I need to do. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this really simple. I'm going to go into my sources, my tightening menu. Uh, the, by default, that'll be called source tightening. You can create other ones or change the name to, to fit whatever you need. My selector mode here, we're going to use control. Control means that when I pull a socket, it's going to select a program based on this chart below. If I put it in confirm mode, it works a little bit differently. We'd have to select a program from an external source, and it would make the, the user, the operator, pull the correct socket before the tool would be ready to run. So let's take a look here. We're going to leave it in control. I'm not going to change anything on my max consecutive not OKs or anything like that, but you could if, you're, if your application called for it. Down here below, I need to set up my identifier selector configuration. And what this is, is this is basically a table that says, when I see identifier one, which from the socket selector is going to be my first position, I select this program. And right now I have this set to reverse forward uh, sync zero one. So I'm going to leave that here right now. And then I have my other programs. Two is, is number two, three is number three, and four is number four. If I wanted to, I could put those in any order I want. For today, we'll keep it pretty simple and have them one is one, two is two, three is three, et cetera. So I have this set up. Now what I need to do is go into my virtual station menu. And I've got two things that I need to do here. So I need to go down and I need to map that socket selector that's connected to the tool to this virtual station type. This is more important on our controllers that can have multiple tools. But it is a step that you also have to do on the ICB and ITB tools. So to do that, I'm going to take configuration one, which is the configuration that I set up for the socket selector. And I'm going to grab this socket selector. And I can tell which one it is because the serial number is here. So if I have any questions, I can look on the bottom of the socket selector to verify that that's the serial number that I'm connected to. I'm going to click Apply. And now I have that socket selector actually connected to this virtual station in the tool. 
I'm going to go back to our virtual station menu. And the last thing we need to do here is we need to change our task. So instead of having a PSET selected like I do right now, I want to change this to a source selection. And I'm going to use that source tightening that we, that we set up here just a few minutes ago. So I'm going to change my process to source tightening. I'm going to apply this. And I will see very quickly the blue lights went off on my tool. It's not ready to run now because I don't have a socket selected. And I can also see that all the positions are blinking. So that's letting me know that it's monitoring all four of those positions. So if I pull the trigger on the tool, you can see in the software here that I'm getting a wrong socket selected event. So now I will go and select one of these sockets. And you can see the blue lights immediately come on on the tool. If I switch to the result view here in the software, we can see down at the bottom that it's selected program one. If I put this back and grab my next socket, you can see now that it's selected program two and the tool operates when I, when I pull the trigger. If I were to pull more than one socket, I can see here when I try to run the tool, same thing, I get the wrong socket selected message. It's just letting me know that having more than one socket out is not a valid configuration for this tool. So remember, with the ICB and the ITB tools, we have the option of using the access point on the tool. When we use the access point, we can connect the selector six directly to the tool. If we want to, we can also use client mode, where we connect the tool and the selector six to a plant or factory Wi-Fi, and they connect over the plant network uh, to communicate. So either of those options are available. Uh, a very simple option is just to set up the tool and socket selector, but if you require um, some additional integration or you want to do some uh, error proofing with the tool, you'll probably want to connect it to, to your wireless network in your facility. This has been connecting a Selector 6 to an ICB battery tool. If you have any questions, please contact your Atlas Copco representative, and thanks for watching.